why are you late? I, t I told you when we were going to start and you, you, you clearly weren't listening. You don't care about, I, 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 I can't, I can't, I can't even, I can't even really, are we going to do this again? Welcome to the Mosaic Arc. Thank you for joining us. Um, our theme tonight is horribly topical. I, 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 you know, thank you all so much for staying up late to come. And I, I mean, you guys in Australia, it's the middle of the afternoon. We're all, we're all fine and such like that. I really did have some place to be. I, I was dining under a dinosaur this evening. <laughs> um, the uh, the radiologists are in town. They always come to Chicago at this time of the year. And um, I was there at their reception for complicated reasons. But you get to get we get to go to the Field Museum and, and hang out under the dinosaur. So I'm sorry we're late. And and then Kilts had some like weird life thing to do. And I don't know why we're no. <laughs> We're happy we're here. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, well, were you all terrified? How? How? Did, were you convinced that I was really mad at you? Yes. <laughs> and then I got sad because you know, like, uh, well, we're we're keeping like two different time zones all the time, and so when you said it was funny when you posted earlier tonight uh, or today uh, and said, you know. We, we we're gonna start eventually, and it'll be your fault if you don't start on time. I thought, oh no, is this a joke? Like, do I finally? <laughs> but why did you? I, now? Look, I warned you before I did <laughs> that little intro that I was gonna, you know, say something. And it wasn't personal, and did you feel that it was personal still? Well, yeah, because I just made you wait for like <laughs> for ages. Well, what do you think about our audience? Right, I'm blaming. I who am I blaming? Who was I yeah. blaming with my little gaslight right there? Huh? 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 You see what I did? You see how 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 clever how hard it is, even when you know that it's like acting, not to feel mm -hmm. got at by that that kind of of hands up to those stalwart six <laughs> watching in the chat. How could you? Yes, Tempe. Casey. How how could you? How dare you start late? She's gonna gaslight <laughs> us for starting. It's like it, it's so so. And I, I, I hope, I hope you all can see from my example that yes, I have been subjected to that kind of mind game myself. I, I wonder, I wonder whether anybody has ever actually not been gaslit. I mean, I, I have this feeling. It's like we, mm -hmm. do, so we have, we know from Miriam Webster declaring this a few days ago that gaslight or gaslighting i can't remember which one it is who knows why would i know how to you know to tell is the word of the year why do we think maybe that might be the case <laughs> oh so many reasons well, okay, so I do have a list. I have some notes. So, can I name them all? Yeah, well, we can go through it. I mean, how much experience does the entire world now have with this feeling of 
being told one thing, being blamed when we didn't believe the thing that we were told yesterday, being uncertain about okay. what's real anymore. I, I, you were, you were telling me right before we started, your DMs are blowing up. My DMs are blowing up. I mean, we've been doing these episodes for the last several weeks now on <laughs> our friends, my friends, and his new friends. And, you know, all of those conversations that all of those people are now having. And I'm getting DMs constantly, yes, um, from, you know, does so-and-so mm-hmm. believe what he's saying? Can you trust this person? It's 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 an interesting moment to be living in. I mean, the, the lot of, a lot of deep uncertainty right. about who's telling the truth at any given time. Yeah. I'm waiting for you to recover okay. from no. my gaslighting you in my intro. Well, <laughs> you're no, you're like still I'm, you're I'm still in shock. Collapsing. I'm internally collapsing, and I'm I'm, I'm going to have a seizure. No, don't five collapse minutes. on me! Come on, come on, come on! Come back up! Come back up! So, come on. You know I was doing that for a fact. I know, but I've got PTSD oh. from being gaslit for two years. A this, likely this story. Why I did my makeup the way I did my makeup today? Because I decided after. Uh, it became really obvious that you were only brave and stunning and courageous if you were from China. I mm. have decided that I'm Chinese now. I, I I'm buying going to go it. For yeah, I mean, I, you but, might as well be Chinese. It, you know, we can we can be any nationality we want, regardless of where we were born or grew up or <laughs> however long we've lived anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I just I I've, I've just you know. Uh, Oh, so much. <laughs> so you, 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 need, you need to unpack so this terrible. a little bit. Come on, let's 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 pa- okay. pace it out. Pace it out here. I... All right. So, being in Australia for the entirety of the 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 COVID narrative mm-hmm. was basically like being talked at the way you did for. 12 seconds <laughs> all of 12 seconds it was 12 seconds <laughs> to induce absolute panic. And kilt is now un- un- for- un- unbound right yeah, yeah. So I'm, un- I'm unraveling it <laughs> what have i done have i done something wrong i told her i was gonna be late ah! um yeah imagine that continuously 24 7 for two years and coming from every media outlet you could possibly think of and also your friends and your neighbors and your family members and um people on the street and uh with uh, you know this surround sound gaslighting Mm -hmm. with no reprieve and no safe space to escape from it for two years and being told that what we we're witnessing with our own eyes and hearing with our own ears was not real. Over and over and constantly, over again. Constantly, constantly, yep. yeah, yeah. Bomb, just bombarded with it. Bombed, really. It was like we were in the Hiroshima of gaslighting. <laughs> Complete uh, destruction of uh, an anchor of perspective and a, a security of uh, of having a reference point for for the narrative that was being thrown in our faces every day. So yeah, <laughs> I'm a little testy. <laughs> well, okay, I'm a little so I, I'll, let me calm it down a little bit and, th- and think about mm-hmm. it. It's like obviously, I in my life have been said mm-hmm. uh, not not in the in the COVID context, but I was thinking about it, it's like how do we start yeah. this and and really get people to the f- sense of how how. Imp- how important it is to be able to recognize when this is happening to you mm. and mm. that it can be it can be very very subtle i mean the the covid stuff was over the top and and i think the reason that gaslighting now is the merriam webster word of the year is people are suddenly aware of the you know, sort of relentless effects of being told that in the media and by the medical establishment mm. and by you know, friends and, and everything you're saying, but the the experience is also something that can happen to people just in your daily life with, you know, your loved ones, with, you know, people that are coming in and saying, I mean, like you and I, one, I, it's, I'm sorry I triggered you so 
effectively, but on the other hand, it you know proved how easy it was <laughs> in a certain way. Even when I warned you like beforehand, I'm going to say this mm-hmm. and it's not at you and you can still feel it. What it takes to, to be able to break someone's sense of reality right which it comes from the movie the gaslight movie which i i realize i've never seen and i only know it as the trope of what he's playing with the gat the lamps in in the in the yeah, apartment yeah. and saying you know no you're you, that isn't changing you just can't you just don't remember um but the you know the sense of this you, is the guy who's trying to send his wife insane so he's he trying to send his wife stuff. insane and doing doing this thing which denying the reality of what he just said to her previously what you know mm. the 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 sense of it, in my own life experience it's has been if someone says something to you and you're you're trying to test for stable reactions right it's like um and and i think in imp- interpersonal things too it's like if i say if i do this thing that person will be angry so i'll stop doing this thing oh but i do this other thing and the person's still mm-hmm. angry at me or you know i've said we you know we've been told we we've agreed to do something and then no that changed and oh you you misremembered it's it's actually this other thing that's happened and by the end of it you're just like i i don't know how to behave anymore I don't know why mm-hmm. I'm always in the wrong in this situation. I'm trying to correct for it. I thought we had agreed this. And you just you just spiral 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 and to have that technique that psych that psychological technique of destroying someone's sense of cause and effect applied to mm-hmm. a culture yes. a, to the you know the culture of the world on a, you know a mass scale is i mean i I'm, I'm i'm surprised people i'm surprised people took it for quite so long as we have i mean china right now you're making you're making the the joke appropriately now about the the sense of as the chinese now are finally you know it must be hard absolutely horrible to feel like you know we, we're doing everything that we were told to be good to live in this society that we need to take care of each other and now they're being locked in their buildings and burned to death right which Mm -hmm. was what sparked these recent um protests and but the west responding saying oh look it's brilliant that the you know the chinese are standing up against this tyranny in in their culture when we were trying to stand up against the exact same kind of tyranny being applied to us in our home cultures being told in our news media that we were um, you know, crazy and, and, you know, wanting people to die and stuff like that. It's like, I, I, it's, it, no wonder our DMs are blowing up when something so small as, do you trust Milo? <laughs> it's like, how, how do we at any point now in our culture come, come to a feeling of, I know how to behave. I know what's true. I know what actually happened yesterday. I know who the good guys are, who the bad guys are. I know whom I can trust. We're we're in a, a, a truly diabolical breakdown of society if this is where we are right now, where we can't trust either our family, our friends, our leaders, mm-hmm. our media. That went on a little longer than I expected to, because I mean, it's it's interesting. It's happening at all of these different levels, all simultaneously. Everything's just dis- everything's dissolving. Hold on a second, something's happening. I have to. I'm there's there's <laughs> in our meta an alarm going. Our off. meta level is in gonna me- is gonna hit us. There's always something so meta that's happening when we're doing these streams. I have to now put myself on mute and run into the next room and turn off. An alarm that's going off. I can't ignore it. It's go do it. I'm back. Go, I'm coming. Go, back. I, I won't. I won't gaslight you again. Maybe. Should I gaslight her? Stream. Who's watching? Casey. Diabolical is exactly the right description of current life on Earth. Yes, and hopefully, I mean, what we're if we can both untrigger ourselves right now, we're hoping to unpack some of how this happens. Um, I think it's it's hardest for me having recognized that I. You know, in my own life, life, my own personal life, I have people that use this kind of technique against me. Um, and my, my my meta hope is that through our discussion tonight, we can one help people understand when this is happening to you personally, 
Um, but two, also mm -hmm. think about uh, why it's so significant the way it plays out in historical uh, narratives. And if, if we really can get to the hardcore level of stuff, we're going to explain why what's going on with what um, Nick Fuentes and Ye are saying is so incredibly important that we were able to pay attention to. So modest ambition for tonight. <laughs> We're gonna save the world tonight in this live stream if we can figure out the way in which this gaslighting has been played on us. I needed a shot of whiskey for that. <laughs> I've, got, I've got an entire bottle of wine by now, right? Okay, uh, so so let's let let me see if I can just break this down. I do actually have notes, and it's it's gonna work. Oh. But we're gonna we say like that gaslighting is a technique that's used by very um, particularly people that we think of as narcissists and with narcissistic personality disorder that they are needing to control the situation so that you their victim have particular kind of emotional responses and gaslighting is one of the the most powerful techniques that they use because it, it means that you're destabilized and all you can do is is basically have a panic attack right which the narcissist use uses to make you the mirror of the bad feelings that they're having and can't express, I think is, is accurate. Right. Um, what's interesting mm -hmm. is that this, 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 this technique of destabilizing and confusing and traumatizing has been applied on this global level as Ye has used the term for this trauma economy, right? Traumatize and monetize it's for some, you know, something is going on mm -hmm. that we have all been sucked into this instability. And what I've been thinking about a lot over the last couple of years as this has been happening is how this kind of technique, it's been used not just in our immediate COVID situation where we've been, you know, being told two weeks to flatten the curb, wear a mask, don't wear a mask, distance, don't, vaccines work. No, they really don't. Um, uh, mm -hmm. But the, the, that... The, that's you know it's it's not just this one little immediate what little immediate it's not just this, these two years but we are living in a trauma economy that has been layered and layered and layered on um, on uh, at some at certain levels for the past seventy years since World War II um, at other levels since the Enlightenment which is a sort of interesting kind of gaslighting <laughs> claim there at other levels you know, since Jesus died on the cross and the, the layers and layers and layers of the way in which we end up not trusting our own sense of reality is like endemic to, well, the first lie that, that we know of in the great story that we're living in, which is when Satan told Eve, God lied to you. So that's our ambition tonight. We, yeah. Where shall we start? <laughs> do we do we want to? I think no. Yeah. I, the thing is, I want to talk a little bit more about how this plays out at the personal level because it took me mm -hmm. a long time to understand that this is what was happening to me. This this kind of ratcheting technique that can be used in personal relationships, which then we've talked about. You know, psycho psych psychologically can be applied at cultural levels, and then we can play out at the different historical levels. And I'm not sure how many of those we can unpack. Maybe, this may be gaslighting 101, which we'll have 102, 103, 104. 101, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe can can you help? Um, talk, let's so start by talking you through at the personal level. What do you understand about this, and what do you know about it? Oh yeah, <laughs> gotta go deep on this one, honey. I, We're saving the world. I need, I needed whiskey for that one. Um. Okay. So on a personal level, well, I've known a lot of people that have done this, and as I've gotten older, I've begun to recognize that a lot more people are doing this as a, as a, as a, um as a communication style that they've learned uh, or normalized as a communication style versus just a, a malicious manipulation tactic. But, 
I mean, how personal do you want me to get? No, though? that's no that what you're describing. Do at this yeah. this level is good. It's like saying realizing mm. that more people use this than maybe we were aware of. Um, and 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 being able yeah. being able to recognize it when it's happening to you. I mean, I, w one thing yeah. say, one thing that I think, for example, Yay responded to. We're just going to keep going topical here. What Yay responded to when he was on the Tim Pool um, podcast the other night. Um, everybody mm -hmm. knows, the entire world knows that Ye walked out when Tim started in on a particular line of questioning and the huge, you know, the huge response is, oh, you know, Ye's just being hypersensitive. Well, yes, he's being hypersensitive because he understands, mm -hmm. he can feel it. He knows when that stuff is starting. He's, he's, he's been talking about it enough that, you know, he's, he's woken up enough to recognize if you have if you start paying attention to the way this this gaslighting prac thing happens you, you you'll see it i mean it's it's like a fencing probably you can see it happening before a lot of other people would notice it but it's going it's it's once you start recognizing the signs you can see it happening and you know you need to get out of there now because there is absolutely no way yeah. that the person who is deploying it against you is going to be reasonable at any point. They're not going to hear you trying to have a conversation or remember the the situation in 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 a fuller perspective or not. They are that 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 is they have no interest in that whatsoever. So it does help us if we can start practicing saying this is how it starts. This is what it looks like. This is the warning signs that you can attend to. Mm. Well, I I uh, I started to think about this a lot when I was reflecting on conversations that I'd had at particular points in life with people when I realized uh, that every time I was in an interaction with that particular person, the exchange of courtesy and uh, small talk was always a pretext for an agenda that they had that they needed to project in a way that uh, presented it to me with the hope that I would not recognize it as an agenda and therefore um, my mind's going in a lot of different directions with this. So This, this is a hard topic. It's a, <laughs> it's a really difficult, it's a really difficult topic because if it's ever happened to you in, you know, uh, in ways where you realize later on, oh my God, this is what I was dealing with this, with this particular interaction. The relationship that you thought you had with the particular person, any kind of relationship doesn't have to be romantic. Any kind of relationship, you realize what you just, you're reviewing it like a bad contract. Yeah. Yeah. So you're you're with someone who's trying to promote their own agenda and while they're doing this interviewing you to extract information from you that will allow them to pivot and maneuver and propose their agenda and uh and have that uh successfully established as the the foundation of your particular relationship so without giving a particular example like i mean i always used to say that uh you know junkies are natural natural narcissists mm -hmm. you know they uh in the 90s there was always this thing where people were talking about um king heroin the opium poppy, opioid addicts, they tend to they tend to develop these these very similar uh, behaviors because they have an agenda. Their agenda is very clear, very obvious. What do they want? <laughs> they want mm -hmm. Easy to manage, you know, the agenda. Uh, and if anyone has been around somebody who's been um, enslaved by this particular kind of addiction, you'll understand the the deep need to develop a true and deep relationship with that person almost seems impossible because there is constant betrayal there is a constant lying behavior but 
they can also come across as very charming and uh they're you know they're presenting anything that they can in order to manipulate you into helping that enable them with their um drug addiction it's kind of a form of gaslighting in the sense mm -hmm. that their agenda is i want drugs you've got something that i can get and use to get me those drugs so no matter what your no matter what uh the non-junkie thinks they're doing or getting out of the interaction with the junkie at that particular moment the only agenda on the table is how uh the non-junkie is going to enable the junkie that's mm -hmm. it so that's like one example that I'm thinking of in the, in, to, in, in the sense of like the communication style that's there. Um, this is a purely transactional relationship. It's a purely transactional interaction where the transactional nature of the interaction is not overt. It's not on the table. It's not out in the open. You know, if you're going to business, you're doing a deal with somebody. Everybody knows what we're here for. We're here for business. But in a personal context, when something is purely transactional, there's an element of deception because there's no forewarning. You're not being told, oh, okay, I'm actually here for some person's benefit. They need some resources from me or whatever the, whatever it is. Um you're being hoodwinked into thinking that you're actually establishing a genuine uh, connection with that person. Um, I'm kind of wandering off because, like, the the amount of examples well, I have of this I, is just I, I, no, the no, thing they're is, all tangled yeah, up. Yeah, they're and, all tangled up, and and I think that this is, I mean, the gas, the whole gaslighting problem is you start losing contact with what you think is real. Right, the the sort of yeah. cause and effect of things, and the example I was giving earlier about your, you know, in one starts wondering how many normal reactions, you know, normal um, relationships one has, but also to realize that um, the, those of us who have had these kind of narcissistic dependent relationships tend to also get stuck in them later with other people. <laughs> So, you know, you start you start realizing that, you know, you've you've grown up with it or you've had this kind of interaction in a powerful moment in your life and then it replicates and then you start thinking, oh, this is what all relationships are like. Um, and and mm -hmm. so it, it becomes very difficult to realize, no, 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 this is this is a particular kind of 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 interaction that you end up doubting yourself a lot. Right. The, the, the sort of yes. feeling of, well, you know, this person who I am very close to in love is telling me that I'm bad at interpersonal relationships. Oh, it must be me. And it, it, it cycles out and you get permanently sort of stuck in it. And you realize everybody listening, you should still have the, the sense of this has been done to us at a global scale. <laughs> the, the, you yeah. know, the, 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 the transactional thing is, you know, the sort of most brutal, the world, the world, you know, leaders who want to make a lot of money off of all of us need us trapped in this doubting cycle because the, mm. the, the prime doubting cycle, I mean, the, one of the, the sort of meta doubting cycles is your own like body and your own physical, physical reality. But the, 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 the social doubting cycle is I don't know what's good for me, my neighbors, my family, my children. I need, you know, it's like this, this constant layering of, I've made, I, I need to be told by this, this authority figure, this, this power figure, this somehow that we've given them that ability to tell us what we're, what, what, when we're right and when we're not. And the, the, the feeling yes. of loss of self is horrendous. It's, it's, it's absolutely horrendous. And if you've been in that, in a, in a, in a relationship that makes you feel that way, um, I, it, it can take a very long time to recover from it. Right. And, and we're, I mean, it, as, it takes a very long time. Well, as this, as a world where, you know, it's like, we, how, how are we even going to get out of this feeling of d dissociation?
and and so forth. Yeah. So there's the the transactional thing. I mean, I I'll say that. Um, I mean, some of it. It's you, you talked about it as addiction. I mean, these kinds of these kinds of interactions and problems can arise. A lot of different kinds of addiction, right? There's there's the the yes. the you know the supply addiction of alcohol or drugs, but but there's also addictions of. I mean, I'm I'm thinking of you know, situate the. We're trying not to name the people that we're actually thinking of when we're we're saying these things because these are actually real relationships. We say, people that live off of your own emotional response, right? And so we'll set yes. you up to have a yeah. particular kind of response, which they need you to have because they have darkness that they're not able to process. And so they need you to take that on and you become their mirror, the the, the thing. And, and by way of your taking on their fear and anxiety and self-doubt and so forth and expressing it in the narcissistic situation, they feel better because you you're now crushed. Clearly the world lead, the mm. world leaders that are trying to crush us with COVID don't want us happy and family create creative and making world and, you know, having good businesses and stuff like that. I think you know, there's, there's a, a diabolical mm -hmm. level of just hating life and goodness and, you know, the truth, beauty and goodness there. And it, the, mm. the, the horror of it is, is that it, this can happen to us on these, these immediate interactive personal levels and on much more, sort of uh, community and, and historical social levels. Maybe we need another mm -hmm. example. I'm not sure we're doing this one very well. <laughs> well which is which is interesting. I mean I started us off and I, I triggered us to be to be gaslit and confused and and and, and sad. That's not good. <laughs> trying to make me cry on a stream. I wasn't um, actually. I warned you, and there, therefore, it's very interesting that it can still be so powerful. Yeah. See this. See this is the interesting thing when conservatives are always talking about that. You know, like those stupid liberals and their trigger warnings. Mm. Like, oh my god, you've got no no idea. Like that that whole uh, woke madness. I mean, Owen has said it before. He said you're dealing with people that are broken. They've got some kind of trauma. That you know, there's a there's. It, manifestation of a dysfunctional like uh social system it's not uh, uh i mean obviously there's like individual evil there is evil mm. and satan is real but a lot of people that have um succumbed to the the breakdown of their uh individual spiritual identity in some kind of petri dish of psychological manipulation and then everyone sees the end product of it and thinks, oh my God, they're so sensitive. They're, they're fucking complaining. Excuse my language. They're complaining about being triggered all the time. But it's like, yeah, because if you're in a cult and you've been uh, processed in a similar way to how cult leaders have mm. been uh, processing their cult followers, of course there's going to be triggers because you're dealing with people that have been, uh, psycho spiritually processed into uh, uh yielding their um yielding their free will to the the um what's the word uh, i'm looking for um to the repository of uh, uh their own um you know, uh, individualism. Like I, I, I'm getting too verbose. It's a really hard idea. Like I've just got the the physical image in my head of how like like you know like okay, it, this will be easier. You're making more you know, sense you than you that? think. Trust me. <laughs> okay, because I don't think I make any sense at all right now, which is topical. <laughs> all of this we we do this to ourselves this every time and feel, realize right? for this episode we have no images, we have no anchor, we are surfing yeah. on pure trying to keep trying to make and this is you realize okay we've met ourselves badly right that the problem with when you've when I'm you've been gaslit 
No, when you've been gaslit. The, okay, so I'll tell you. The the only way out of being gaslit yeah. is chronology. I'm t- I'm just straight up. <laughs> that, yes. that you need to know what yes. can, this happened and then this happened and then this happened and this happened because the primary tactic that I, well, certainly that I've experienced in, in gaslighting is telling you you don't remember what just happened. It's mm. like the, mm. the 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 sort of I I, I I I one right. I experienced this. I'm talking to the person who's telling me that never happened. You that didn't just happen. What are you talking about? That didn't just happen. Yes. And I realized that it, it was so bad in my life growing up to have this effect that I, and I've, I've been thinking about this. Why did, why was I able through, I, for example, COVID and, and stuff like that to keep my sanity one, you know, friends and, and, mm. and our poetry and so forth. But I think the the deeper practice I have is I started keeping diaries when I was very young. Mm-hmm. Um, I was, you'll, you know, this is hilarious in our potential context here. I was, I read Anne Frank's diary and was very inspired by her, parent diary <laughs> um, and started keeping a diary. But I realized that I, I've been practicing since 1977. Oh no, actually I had a little five year, but five year one that started in 1973. I, since basically mm-hmm. I was eight, I was practicing writing down th- everything that happened in a day. And then in 1977, mm-hmm. I got a Generally. bigger one that was like a page a day. And I wrote in that one. And then all through high school, and my high school diaries are not as not as not as literary and polished as Anne Frank's diary is, curiously enough, because <laughs> I was actually thirteen. All right, um, that everybody will know what I'm talking about. Uh, that um, you know th- they're embarrassing because I'm mainly worrying about how fat I am and how the boys don't like me and how fat I am and oh yeah, how fat I am. Mm. But the thing is, I I did practice making myself write down what kept happening and that mm. that sort of you were you're you're your own journalist i'm my own that, journalist and i can you can you yeah, can talk yeah. to me and say you know this was happening on this day back in you know 1982 and i you know i can go and i can look at my diary and i can say no that's wrong you're lying i remember this is real which is why i became a historian <laughs> because I think yeah. I, you know, I think history is a response to the trauma of experience, and 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 a need to mm-hmm. anchor what actually happened against the 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 sort of fog proliferation of variants on the story that people around you are going to start telling you because. And here, I, it's like this, like a pull out of our fog of trying to explain to you what gaslighting feels like, right? To fight it, yeah. to feel like saying, I know what happened and what you're trying to make me believe to make me feel bad didn't, isn't real. Mm. Um, and the, 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 the amount of effort that and I don't even want to say society because I'm not sure how it happens. I mean, we can recognize it at this individual level and we can see it at the societal level, but why does it happen? Right. Where is it coming from? I'm not, I'm, I'm not even sure about that. I don't know how to solve that one, but somehow you're enveloped in this fog of telling you don't trust yourself. You know, you're the bad person. It's, it's you who needs to apologize. And all of these bad things are happening because of what you did. The only, I mean, it's like me and my, me and my, um, you know, giant notebooks, right? That the only way mm-hmm. I've seen, I've found to be able to cope with all of that is write it down so that when someone comes along and says, well, this, this was going on at certain, such a time, I was like, no, I, I know it. I know what was going on. I have my archive. Well, it was like when Kavana, Kavanaugh, how do you guys pronounce it? Judge Kavana. Kavanaugh. Know? The one that got me too. Yeah, Kavanaugh, that's one. Who was, very um, interestingly, born on the exact same day I was. Not just the same <laughs> date. Ari Shafir, we have the same birthday. Kavanaugh and I were born on the same day in the same year. We are exactly the same age, although I think I'm a little older because I think I was born in the middle of the night and he maybe I don't know. He, unless his mom told him every year that he was born at 155 in the morning. But on the same day. So Kavanaugh. Okay, go on. Yeah. Well, he was journaling. That's why he. That's why he got out of 
they were trying to do to him. Mm-hmm. Remember, it was it was the it was the Me Too moment, and then uh, suddenly he produced all of these diaries, and uh, it it was uh, disclosed to the public that he'd been a habitual journaler for <gasps> for his entire life, and so he got to refer to all of these little journals that he kept in the archives or regarding what he was up to when he was drinking beer with his buddies in college or it was high school school. no this is that's so interesting you bring him up because as he was giving that testimony Mm. and i'm listening to it and i said i know that summer i know that i mean there was i don't even know what he was saying but it was like i had this i didn't know when his birthday was right i looked it up because i was Mm -hmm. listening to him talk about the feeling of that summer and i'm like I had this very strong sense of you were exact. You and I were the exact same age. How interesting! And then I looked him up mm-hmm. on Wikipedia, and I found indeed we were the exact same age. So the 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 feeling of the time was correct. The feeling of the the arc of how things played out over that summer. It would and mm-hmm. I'd forgotten that he was journaling. But yes, it's like it's interesting to find how do you how do you anchor yourself in your own memory. Well, that is, in fact, we're, we're in our clue and media moment always. The the writing is a memory yes. technology. Now that mean it can be abused, obviously, <laughs> but the yeah. the one the what the thing that you can say if it's if I've written it down and I know I was writing it down. I mean, Memento is another problem, right? In the movie where he ends up writing all on his skin and he wakes up and it's still not the same memory. It's like this this problem of our. The gaslighting is a problem of breaking down our sense of of uh, our memory. We have these other technologies yes. that can help us pre- anchor ourselves otherwise. Yes. Uh, there was two things I wanted to say. Okay. So the the first was that you've acted as your own journalist. This is like the imp- most important part of why journalists should be telling the truth and why they should not be politically weaponized right. is because they're supposed to be journaling for a society. They're supposed to be journaling for culture, for civilization, or uh, uh, or else we don't have that kind of collective memory to, to rely on if they're not reliable people. Right. Um, we're dealing with an environment where the media itself is completely uh, politically weaponized. There is no such thing as unbiased media. There is no, like from my, I'm, I'm, I'm raiding my mind right now to try and think of people in Australia that I would trust to report a story without any kind of bias. And there may be one or two on my, on my list of the entire, um, Army of uh, army of media personalities and journalists. Actually, I have a story on this. Remind me later. I may or may not remember. But, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. Um, what I wanted to say before regarding how everybody's complaining about being triggered, how they want trigger warnings, and how there's this hyper responsiveness to what they perceive as uh, you know existential threats to themselves based on things like words and um, images and uh inappropriate tweets and you know this kind of multimedia uh multimedia violence that seems to have uh been blamed for uh hurting people in the real world even though it's on the on on the uh, in the in the digital anyway we're dealing with people like this a magnificent documentary i don't know if you've seen this before I was talking about it on Telegram years ago. I said, who's seen this documentary? It's called uh, Wild Wild Country. I haven't seen it. It was on Netflix a little while ago. So have you seen the meme of that guy, Osho, that Indian guru with the beanie? No. Okay. So there, there was a Indian guru who was in India, and then he was so... Uh, scandalous that the Indian government said no more you can't <laughs> run this ashram you're out dude and so he left and he went over to Oregon in the United States of America and set up his uh, utopian project in Oregon with his 2IC who was this crazy woman called Sheila anyway if you haven't seen this documentary you got to see this documentary 
I was I was loving it because we had a lot of these Osho communities that have popped up, mushroomed all over Australia. Mm. Anyway, Osho, the they called him the Rajneeshi. He was like the you know typical Indian guru, or whatever. But he was really oddly dressed. I don't know why they always dress like they're from science fiction movies, like this kind of space suits. But he'd always wear a beanie with them. It's just odd. It's just it's very very strange. And of course, he ran the whole place like it was his um his own personal Shangri La. He had all the women mm. he wanted, and like you know, uh, he'd psychologically manipulated all of his followers. And broken them down to where, like, all Western values are evil. Fundamentally, mm. the West is uh, uh, the source of everything wrong in the human experience since we crawled out of the slime or Eden. And it was this massive kind of psyoping operation where they were pulling in Americans from all over the country. Mm packing them on buses they had tons of homeless people that they were putting on buses and they were packing them into this massive compound in oregon and uh brainwashing them into uh being hostile towards american civilization american culture western civilization western culture and everyone started you know it just got wild like it's called wild wild country for a reason but it's fantastic documentary you see that process of how everyone's identity starts getting broken down. Mm. These people can't journal, bringing us back to your point of how you've catalogued uh, your life and, and the importance of chronology. Because they're in this like Indian guru ashram environment, very, uh, very achronological because it's all about the transcendental experience. Mm -hmm. So everything they're doing is about uh, how you feel in the moment, how you feel in the moment. Don't, don't worry about the past. Don't, you know, uh, we're, we're here now. We're doing this now. Uh, encouraging everyone to forget their life outside of that um, cult compound. Taking off all the external signs of their life outside of that cult compound. Like, people would not even dress in the clothing that they owned prior to going there. They had, like, maroon red uniforms and everyone wore the same color mm. you know talking about everybody physically looking the same and how that starts to break down the identity so the rajneeshis they all had to wear the same colors and uh there was no privacy because they were in communal living so without the privacy they can't sit down and start reflecting okay what happened today mm -hmm. like what the guru you know what's the guru t telling me what is he talking about blah 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 so they weren't journaling they were going with the flow uh, under the direction of this beanie wearing Indian psychopath. <laughs> and uh, I kind of lost my frame of mind, uh, of, of reference and mind, but. <laughs> Which is going to be a theme here. So, what I'm thinking of is. Yeah. So, you, you, see, you see a population of people behaving now, uh, sorry, behaving then the way libs, the libs, the crazy libs, as everyone likes to call them, same way, same behavior. Uh, well, the thing is, I think it's it's it's, it's, it's the, so the, the 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 bigger problem is, and I think your example is a good a good um, description of it. What happens when? Okay, truth means we can know who to trust, and trust mm. means we can, you know, make some prediction about how people are going to behave in certain situations. Mm -hmm. And the degree to which you practice this complete dissociation between past and, and future, it's like, or, mm -hmm. or, or differentiation so that you can tell, you know, who, who behaves this way, who behaves that way. Socially, what we need to do, what we need to be able to figure out, and this works, you know, both at one-on-one -on -one personal and on the, the, you know, the group is who's going to behave how under what circumstances. And the, the mm. more you create these situations where people can behave however they want from one minute to the next, and you can't predict based on their previous behavior, how they're going to behave tomorrow, this, 
it i mean it could sound like oh cool and you know sort of transcendent and mystical and the the, the moment is the true truest moment and you but that is i mean your own dog needs to know how you're going to behave from now. It's like our, our animals to understand us better than maybe we do. It's like the dog wants to know what to do, which is correct for the situation. So the dog watches you and the more you behave consistently in that situation, the more the dog is happy because it's like, good, I now know what to do in this situation. If you're completely chaotic mm -hmm. from one minute to the next, the animal's going to be t tormented, you know, terrorized. And, that we're mm. doing this to each other. I mean, lying, that's why lying is so terrible, right? It's like you created a, 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 a representation of the way you think, the way you you know, believe, and therefore you are creating an expectation that your behavior can be predicted off of the basis of that thing that you said. But if you were lying, no, yeah. you can't. You can't predict how that person's gonna behave. And therefore, Nobody knows how to, you know, behave around you, which is, you know, the opposite version of why people get so upset when you seem to change your mind about something or, you know, you've you've made some. Yeah, OK, so now I just thought of this other thing. On the one hand, we'd like people to be predictable because that gives us a sense of stability and reality and trustworthiness. And on the other hand, we hate when people change grow get new skills get married go to a new place i mean because we can't do that predictive activity and and i think the the triggering stuff yeah. is in fact people responding to that fear of change it's, it's like you you, you, mm. you don't you don't want people to behave in this quote unpredictable way because that makes you feel unhappy and 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 terrified so somehow we have to be able to both be trustworthy and grow. And the problem for people that have grown up with someone who's narcissistic is that they, the your parents or your siblings or your, I mean, narcissistic parents are often, you know, generationally problem. You can't either, you can't trust the feedback that you're getting and you're not allowed to change. Mm. Yes. That's very true. Well, for someone who's manipulating you, change is a threat to them. Right. You know, this is what Ye's been talking about. Everyone's focused on hate speech, but they're not actually listening to what he's saying. It's that uh, I changed the way I did something and I was being punished for it by people who did not want me to change. They didn't, they didn't want him to grow. Right. Like giant global multinational corporations don't want their like star mascot to suddenly, uh, run around talking about the resurrected King of Judah. <laughs> like it's obvious. Sorry, but <laughs> he's not good for business. So, Yeah. Although it is, uh, that's a later thought. Okay. So I think we are, we are finally getting to a core of something here is, uh -huh. okay. So the narcissistic gaslighting is always about control. Mm -hmm. Um, it is, I mean, the, 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 what you were describing about the junkie behavior is because they want a consistent supply either of, you know, practically money to get drugs, but also just attention, right? The greatest drug is attention always yes and and, yes, and you know narcissistic gaslighting is usually about getting attention regardless right good or bad it's and a reaction right it's, yes. it's it's some kind of reaction yeah. in the circumstances that yay is finding himself is handlers wanting him to behave in a particular way i mean there's the the brand element that we've talked about before it's like they, they branded him one thing they wanted to keep behaving like that because they want yeah. him to be sell saleable Right. It's like sell more of these things. Brand, although we've talked mm -hmm. about that in the corpseration problem, is this apparently yes. stable thing that you can generate more and more and more of and you need to get people addicted to that so they want more and more of it and, and so forth. Yes. Well, yeah, he said it. He said when you become famous, you stop growing. Right. So 
So it's a grow, uh, growth, redout, growth retardation. You become retarded. Yes. You're like famous retarded. I love the word retarded. I use it a lot. It's because slowed down. When you say you've been it, slowed in, down. Yeah. Yes. You've been slowed you're down. Saying it There's Latin. a drag on you. Yeah. Yeah, the romance languages. When you say it in a in, in a in a in a romance language, a language that's connected to Latin, it literally just means slowed down. So, like, I was retarded today. That's why I was late coming to the mm -hmm. stream. In English, it sounds so uh, horrendously offensive. But you know, if I was saying it in Italian, it'd be like I was just retarded. Like I was held back. <laughs> I've been slow. Well, the I'd... thing is, it probably yeah, it was. I think it was originally meant to be a, a compassionate way of saying you're you just been slowed down, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, that person's a bit slow. Like, right. Like, poor dear. You know, there's no um, kind of extreme uh, prejudice against somebody who, you know, for whatever reason has been slowed. But we've all been slowed, which is why I use it. Right. Because, I, you know, I talk about that a lot. I've said it so many times. And now I'm starting to get these amazing messages from people who are starting to notice what I've been saying, that, mm. uh, you know, Australia is living in a kind of amnesiac state. Right. So we're in dream time down here. We don't have chronology. This culture has no chronology. I grew up in an achronological culture. Uh, and then I was uh, introduced to a chronological society, which was the, you know, immigrant Hellenic community who are all about that Kronos. Mm -hmm. They love time because, uh, you know, they invented everything. So I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> See, I went, I, I went back we're gonna really, oh, We're yeah. going to really need our, our pigeon clips for this one to, 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 to piece together whether there was a, a thread, right? <laughs> you realize no, for our gaslighting no. episode, we have the least the, the least clear thread dry, but it's all here. It's still all here. <laughs> we'll get there. Yeah. We'll get there. Um, no, there was a point. Well, dream time, it was retarded. Just about, like yeah, it was just, yeah, just being retarded. Like I always say, Australians are retarded, and people are you know, oh my god, so offensive. I was like, no, but we actually are retarded. We're slowed. We don't have a sense of time mm. here. We don't have markers of time in this country in the same way as everywhere else. And people could say to me, oh, you're actually so dumb. We have clocks. Do not watch the clocks. It's not about that. It's about like a civilizational um, anchor. Like Australia has forgotten BC, AD. Australia has no sense of what actually happened from its time as a convict settlement to its experience in colonial formation. Mm -hmm. If you ask most of the people that live here, they have no idea what has happened until maybe last week. If you talk about the history of the place, it's not like Europe where everyone has a general sense of what's been happening, you know, they might well, they may or may not now. It's it's hard oh. to say because, like, you can say, yeah, well, um, you know, true. you have monuments, you have buildings, you have all of these things are necessary for a culture to have some this anchoring that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So our 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 monuments, you know, monument. Our monuments are very odd. That's all I can say. We have a very strange set of monuments. The the most remarkable and uh, ubiquitous, you know, they're everywhere. Mm. Is the, the war memorials. So we talk about the being the being in the time loop of post World War Two. <laughs> we live in we it. We live in We're it. In We're that totally in it. Time loop because every town in Australia has a war memorial. Mm. Great War One and World War Two, and it's the obelisk and it's this little you know uh statue and it has a plaque and it says you know the anzacs is fought in the war we remember them for their service and that's it that's all the town has in terms of a marker of time and it always points towards that war it's all we've got in terms of like uh the the a physical structure pointing us towards events that have uh 
created the the architecture of us as a culture. But without those, we have no way of navigating historicity. So that you know, that's why I'm always saying it's achronological. Mm-hmm. But it, but and this is ex- okay. As I'm explaining it to you, I'm thinking. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay, so but there's this problem because the monuments themselves can create a false uh, history, and and this is this is where I'm. It's like I would like to believe. This is the problem with the gasoline. I would like to believe that when I write everything down in my journals, I'm anchored. But, you know, I've been in conversations where I'm sitting there writing stuff down and, and the person that I'm talking to is changing it as I'm writing it. And I'm like, no, this is this is not happening. Um, you can have it written down and someone else can say, no, no, that's not what happened because I remember it differently. That that we're in this, mm-hmm. it, it it's, it's a, the, I mean, the real horror of not being able to know whether or not what happened to you happened or not. Yeah. When you are faced with someone who's telling you something completely different. And the whole culture now being told, I mean, this is this is the sort of cataclysm. You have you have those war monuments. The United States, you know, we went through a few years ago tearing down all of our monuments because we didn't want those particular mm-hmm. people remembered. But the thing is the people tearing down the monuments yeah. didn't really know who they were in the first place. I mean, they, they kind of they kind of knew who Columbus was, but but some of the other ones not so much because the reasons they were giving for tearing them down were not always the reasons that would apply to that person. They just saw them as objects in the landscape. Yeah. Yes, I'm losing it again. God, we're t- we got to pick a different topic next time that has better anchors. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, no, they they're they're pulling down the monuments and and the and and pulling down like this. This was the you know, like kind of ignorant iconoclasm because you were talking about this on other streams mm. uh, and then EMJ and uh, a bunch of other people were talking about the one at St. Louis, remember? And it was like the, right. they were guarding, all the Catholics were out guarding the, the statue of uh, St. King Louis uh, in, uh, what was the year? Help me out. <laughs> Which year? Which time? What are we talking about? The Which the- year? what two years ago mm. i mean the, the, they're, the, they're doing the ro- uh, yeah that was two years ago yeah they're rallying around a statue right um well everyone is trying to pull them down even though they don't know what the significance of the statues are right but that particular one everyone had had a very strong feeling uh about uh, about it the the significance of it then we had the clash between the memory of the secular world and the memory of the church. Right. So what I'm thinking of now is, I, I think you showed me this. There's a little, four, is it 4chan Reddit? I'm not sure. I don't know which one it is. Um, talking about the mytho- the grounding mythology of the, the, the present. Oh, yeah, that was the 4chan one. Okay, yeah, so yeah. The, our, you know, the founding myth the is is only from 1945. It's grounded, therefore, in that war. It's grounded on a horror. Yes. Trauma. Trauma. Mm-hmm. And there was some other element to it. But it, the, 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 there is a way in which that's the only, I mean, and, and there, it, there's a kind of question whether people even know that history, but there's a, there's a, a way in which, a, quote, history can so completely overwrite any complexity to the narrative that people become mm-hmm. incapable of even thinking about that that problem and i'm mm. i'm saying that it's sort of in the panic that i'm feeling about our ability to unpack this particular topic realizing that you know when you're facing one of these gaslit narratives you will feel um i, I mean t- well terror anxiety triggered yeah. all of the things that are happening around what yay and nick may or may not be saying mm-hmm. which is the bit the big trauma gaslit narrative that we and modernity exist within constantly and COVID, always the COVID stuff is is kind of a like a a, a icing overlay 
you know, mm-hmm. sort of a fluffy, bubbly, more recent thing that some of us can actually recognize as we were gaslit and propagandized and lied to and told we were crazy, but in a way that mm. was so, so at odds with our our ability to keep track of ourselves, right? And I, I would say to mm-hmm. a certain extent, you say all of our social media that we've been, you know, posting in Telegram, that we've been writing to each other, that we have archive now of all of the stuff that was said. Don't delete your, yeah. <laughs> don't delete. Whatever it is, no. I mean, you may or, it may or may not, you may, you know, need context to be interpreted. It may need, you know, fuller references. It may need this, but at least you have in this, this digital archive web moment, some way of going back and seeing what we were actually saying three years ago or two years ago or last year mm. or yesterday, which is itself yeah. in, in a way interesting, the antidote to the ability to for people to constantly erase all of that over and over and over again, right? So, you know, the, the, these things are said about, about Yay or Nick or, or Milo or, you know, whoever else out there, we can go back and find and there is a there is a there is a, a a memory anchor in in that archive okay so all of that's going on yeah. but we're also constantly mm-hmm. living in the horrible haunting of modernity of the traumas that we have been told happened and that we can never forget and we are being battered over the heads with those relentlessly in our own education system Mm -hmm. which is literally what yay tried to tell lex friedman when when the opening of his 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 conversation with friedman was we shouldn't be studying history in school anymore because it's all basically reiterating these traumas and what yay said Mm -hmm. what he said was he meant you know in in the case of black america slavery right the 1619 project Mm -hmm. is you're not allowed to think about yourself as an American, except in so far as our country was founded on slavery. Therefore, that's the reality of our present, which is this trauma that you now have to feel responsible for. And if you don't acknowledge it, you're the bad person. Mm. Well, that that narrative is being projected onto us because we, you know, we have our own particular um, trauma uh, histories in Australia, but ours are different to America, totally different to America. And yet this same way of dealing with things is being projected onto us. And people, because we don't have this monument structure around us, we don't have this very strong cultural um and civilizational anchor in a colonial environment, we have absorbed it to a very toxic degree very quickly. The way you guys interact with each other about your particular trauma histories is is, is rushing into Australia. And even people that I would have thought never would have uh, eaten those poison apples have all taken little bites. Forgetting themselves, forgetting who we are, forgetting mm. who our like our people were, who who they still are. But because they don't remember, they get narrative an imported uh, foreign narrative placed on them, and so they're eating it. Well, I'm not so. so I understand I'd... when when Ye's, when Ye's saying what he's saying. I, I I hear what he's saying. I understand what he's saying in terms of like don't don't worry about history anymore because you know this this is just a, a trauma based thing. But I mean, this is what I'm saying. This this is a part of the problem. It's like I I recognize Ye saying we can't we can't be living reliving this trauma constantly. But on the other hand, mm. I say you're not going to get out of the trauma unless you can show people your gaslighting narcissistic abusers that what they're saying to you yes. isn't true. So, and, and I, I, yes. and I think it's again, in that, in that Friedman interview, they flipped back around to, in fact, trying to prove, I mean, yay actually does know some history. It sounds like I need to talk to him. 
that young man, um, that the only way out of that trauma can be giving an accurate representation would actually happen. I mean, my, my, my immediate, so yes. I, and I would say, why, why is so much of the world so, so caught up in the trauma? I think it, it, it is working on all of these different levels for my own personal life. I mean, one of, one of the things that I recognize, I started keeping all those journals when my parents divorced. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, my dad left. Okay. So th that was one. And, and, you know, and you suddenly, when you're talking about, you know, you're having to go back and review your entire history. I was 11 back when I started that full day journal. Right. Um, and you are reviewing, looking for predictives for why this happened, why this suddenly inexplicable, horrible event mm -hmm. came out of the blue and it did, right. So my dad walked us, you know, parents brought us into the bedroom and said, your father's leaving. And I just, I was like, this can't be happening. And, you know, then I, I realized, you know, sort of not consciously, but in retrospect, so I, this will never happen to me again. I will never be caught off guard by something I wasn't paying attention for. So I keep a journal. Mm -hmm. um, but that you, you immediately start trying to figure out what you missed in the, the, the thing that was leading up to you. So there, there are these two... Hunting for clues. You're looking for clues, right? You're hunting for clues. And so on the one hand, I shouldn't spend my life living, living my parents' divorce. Okay, fine. But on the other hand, that event was the thing that taught me pay attention to the things that are happening around you because otherwise you'll be caught off guard. On the other, other hand, you can't always predict everything. And and that's the, no. that's the, the sort of... We see it on the internet constantly right now it's like the the effort that people are making not to be caught and and i think that's the it's like the flip side of all the gaslighting you want to know what's true do i know how to look for all of the the evidence that will show me who this person is can i make sure that i've watched all of the different patterns i mean it's like it's 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 a it's a it's a fun game and it's a trope but it's also a bit crazy making because mm -hmm. Um, you are, what if you're not putting together the right pieces? What if you're creating a false narrative again? What if, you know, you haven't trained yourself, in fact, to watch for the evidence in an appropriate way, you're still going to get caught. And and it's it's like mm. our whole culture, in COVID, I mean, we have Buzzsaw Bear. Hi, Buzzsaw Bear. Um, yes, that we're now, you know, caught up in this COVID thing, but at least COVID gave us the, the, the like my parents' divorce, this clue You've got to pay attention now. You weren't paying attention. Something's broken. Now make a lot of records. So I can I yeah. can see yeah, both sides of Ye's concern, right? To say, don't get caught in the trauma and living only because of that broken thing. But on the other hand, these are the these are our lessons. These are the things that would teach us the history lesson, right? Of not to. I don't yes. think you never repeat it again. But pay attention because. People are going to keep lying to you and and you want to at least be a little bit better prepared for possibilities. We're still aiming at something here. <laughs> Audience. <laughs> well, I was I was reflecting on the Tim Pool walkout, as you were saying, Dad. Mm. Because it was a, an absolute disaster of a podcast, and it wasn't. It's fantastic to watch it. Everyone's, everybody wants to talk to that man and ask him about why he's being so offensive and why he's, you know, he's, he's gone off the... Um, off the deep end doesn't care anymore about his rhetoric, talking about whatever whatever else it is. No one actually wants to sit down and just listen to him rant for a little while. But we do, is... but, you know, we... we yeah, yeah, we're, but... We're trying, but, we're trying. It's interesting, though, because... The, but this is part of the culture, too, is that, like, we're, we're in this... Mm. We're in this really odd... Um, well, you know, I move around a lot. I've been in a lot of different countries with a lot of different kinds of people. So I'm really sensitive and very, like, um, 
tuned into cultures that allow people to just fly off the wall for a little while and then come back into themselves. Mm. I got a very dear friend of mine the other day, she was saying, um, you know, I'm like this, I'm like this, I'm a puff of fish, and then I come back down, just like, you know, I puff, and I blow up, <laughs> and then i got to come back down, and then I'm out again. Right. So that kind of mechanism. Now, where she's from, it's really normal. And people don't blink. They don't mm. have this sense of like, oh, my God, we're under attack. There's like, you know, someone's expressing a strange outburst of emotion and using inappropriate language. Everyone's like, yeah, whatever, we know we know it's fine. It's like, let her go. In a different culture, this is perceived as a threat. It's a, it's, it's perceived as a threat to this uh, tranquility that everyone's uh, pretending exists. It's, it's not tranquil. It's just that no one wants to burst the illusion of tranquility by having these really difficult conversations. So you get this uh, dark side of tribalism where people are uh, expected to ignore their own abuse in order to maintain group coherency. Mm. Sorry, there's little things flying. Um, which is what he was trying to say to all the boys, uh, yay, that is, saying to all the guys in the in the room. They took my money. Uh, like, I had Jewish agents and a Jewish personal trainer, etc. He's like, I, they took my money. And the other guys are saying, wait, who's they? Who's they? Instead of allowing him to make generalizations for the sake of getting through a conversation on how he's been suffering abuse at the hands of people that have been abusing him. The tranquility has to be maintained. Uh, and it's connected to this gaslighting element because like, oh my God, I love Israelis. Okay. So I'll, I'll cut into another, <laughs> so my brain's going in two different spots. Okay. Remember what, so what Gay was saying day, right before he left was my brain's going in about seven different ways. Yeah. yeah. I just thought of all yeah, these things. Like that. Yeah. So I was like, okay. The, if, if that is like a, 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 a microcosm of false tranquility, uh, China shop, you know, full of porcelain, China, not China, the country, where everyone's freaking out because there's a bull in the China shop, which is a saying that my grandmother used to say all the time. You're like a bull in a China shop. She didn't say that to me, though, but it was just something the family said. Okay, so this China shop culture, and then you've got, on the other hand, all the dudes that were at raves, back in my raver days, we get tons of Israelis, heaps of Israelis that were there, dodging the draft. <laughs> They come, yeah, they'd come over for the summer and they just party and then they bugger off back home. And oh my God, intense, so intense. I love them. But they don't care. They will say what they think. They're like Dutch, uh, South Africans, mm. you know, very similar kind of vibe. You're dealing with frontier culture people. They don't have time for bullshit and they will just tell you what they think immediately and they don't care who they're offending. There is something very relaxing about being around a group of Israeli people who are just letting it fly and having a good time in that context compared to like being around people that are in a China shop environment where you can't say the wrong thing and it's like uh, there's an artificial tranquility about it. So I was thinking of the contrast between the two situations because we've got like uh, we've we've got to address this gaslighting effect on the culture and that people themselves are too um they're too unwilling 
to allow someone the opportunity to like weave their own narrative of the abuse that's happened to them for the sake of healing and letting them get through that process by saying this was the perspective of my you know this is my this is my history perspective i'm going to create my own monument now then after i've created the monument for what's happened to me we can all debate my monument but right now i'm creating a monument and this is what's happened i ranted so this is as a really you're hard topic no to i know so as you're talking to be well because we're trying to dodge both the enlightenment and the holocaust okay <laughs> and um i i have well, they're both monument, both both monument destruction on huge exactly. scale, right? Exactly. Yeah. And the you know the fruit of the Enlightenment is the French Revolution, which is a horrific, you know, self implosion of the French. It's like talk, talk, talk about the you know that they and on the basis of reason. And the Holocaust, World War II, is this unthinkable event for modernity. And both of them yeah. are grounded in claims that the West makes about its own goodness. This is mm -hmm. horrific trauma that we cannot, we can't, this is, as we've been talking, I'm saying it's like, I, I think of this as a historian, I think of this as a medievalist who finds the Middle Ages to make infinite sense and modernity to be completely nuts. <laughs> and what I have learned over could you summarize why? Oh yes, like... what what I've learned over the past, I mean, over our summer of talking through all of these problems in our arc, but also in the struggles that I've had for decades trying to understand modern history when I teach it in in European civilization, and I think through this gaslighting yeah. and the COVID and and thinking about what's happening with Ye and Nick, starting to be able to unpack it. One, the Enlightenment is the greatest gaslighting uh, of human history in, in certain ways. I mean, certainly of the West, right? And there's that meme that's the crack pipe, which says work cited the Enlightenment, and it's the, the pipe is, is labeled the Enlightenment. So the Enlightenment is, is primarily a psyop of its own naming, right? That there's this, this moment in which the world is now lit with reason and that we are you know, fundamentally able to create societies that are grounded in um, equality and democracy and constitutional government and, you know, formal mm -hmm. uh, human, human designed structures. And we've been crazy ever since. And the Holocaust, you know, with a subset of World War, World War One, World War Two um, is I, when we teach it in modern history, it's like it's the fulfillment of that. It's the fulfillment of the the the, the structuring of the Enlightenment and the and the Industrial Revolution and the British Empire and everything. It mm. comes down. It comes when I teach it in Eurocid when we end up at Primo Levi in Auschwitz. Um, it is the the sort of fulfillment of this horrible rationality, right? And and certainly mm. complete mechanization com of the human the human person, right? And, and, you know, even to mm. the, the degree to which, you know, things like there's going to be a, a final solution. Oh, great. Right. It's like it's the the the, the opposite of, you know, the utopian perfection. We're going to solve this for good. Mm. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Fallen world. No solution it, on, on those terms. Right. It's not like going it, to it's like the the, um, you know, communism is going to solve the problem of of inequality permanently if, if we can just make it work mm -hmm. perfectly and that we are going to be able to uh mechan well, not just mechanize but rationally figure all of this out and fix it and 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 the enlightenment mm -hmm. you know, that is the the sort of shining hope of the the enlightenment claim that it's it's possible to to mm -hmm. um Conquer human nature with rationality. Yes, but it's not quite the way I was thinking to say it. Um, okay. 
it, it, it's that rationality is the primary feature of our human nature. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. Right. And so the, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The assumption is then that man is a rational creature and not an irrational creature. Or that, but also, I, I, I think the, I may. The rationality is damaged somehow. Well, okay, so the usual, the, this is somewhat caricature, but let's, let's see if we can get it to, to, to make sense by now. Um, that, that okay. you know, straight up saying our reason, which is what Tim Poole and, and the conversation is supposed to appeal to, let's just talk mm -hmm. rationally about all of this. You, yay, are responding out of your emotion and your your dislike of these things that a few people did to you. But if you can rationally see that these things are not happening, that the the dissociation is to say our reason is somehow not fallen <laughs> interesting yeah. claim whereas our emotions yeah. are the things that we can't trust and so we have to to restrain them right the 19th century flips over and starts saying oh well we need you know the emotional proof of the existence of god so you know you end up with by the time freud's writing about it saying well i've never had that emotional experience and therefore god's a lie too that one way or another we've we've um made it, we, it we've made it in modernity impossible to either understand our emotional knowledge and and i'd say that's what gaslighting ultimately is is a uh, an abuse of it's your own sense of the reality of what you're feeling Mm. And the, the 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 strong the stronger gaslighters like they're not only destroying your memory and your your sense of cause and effect they're they're going to try to destroy your own sense of how you actually feel right i'm i'm going to tell you your mm -hmm. feelings are wrong and feelings are actually um also yeah. significant clues to a situation that you're in right if you feel uncomfortable in a situation you're probably noticing something that maybe you can't art articulate rationally yet in words but mm. is still some real information right but conversely claiming that we can think our, our think our way through everything is to claim that our reason is not also part of our fallen nature our reason is fallen as well it's imperfect it's it's clouded mm. it's it's not a, an absolutely reliable um test of everything and so to, to claim with you know people like Tim Pohl that we should just rationally talk about all of this no then you're discounting our the gut experience as well so mm -hmm. but but it's like we've, we we have this thanks to the enlightenment and and the dissociation of our soul from our 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 mind and our mm -hmm. our heart we're these shattered um beings just getting closer to what I was thinking about. Mm hmm. Yeah, we're we're not unified. Well, there was a couple of things that popped into my mind uh, at the beginning of the conversation. Now it's come back to me. Um. Women on the pill. <laughs> uh, well, they're they're chemically adjusting their uh, their physiology, but also their psychology. So the instinct is damaged. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because people in the old days used, used to always talk about feminine intuition. You know, a, a woman's uh, a woman's uh, intuition about things, and well, uh, uh, the 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 more emotionally based decision making that everybody uh, attributes to 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 females. And then they go on the pill, and I uh, forget the study. But everyone's probably seen the meme already. But you know, the 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 physiology changes to a degree where women are making uh, decisions on their partners that they wouldn't have made mm -hmm. if they hadn't had adjust them, adjusted themselves chemically, because they can't smell in the same way that they were smelling previously. Their body's not picking up on um, biochemical signals in the same way. 
So we've really broken ourselves down into hyper rational production units that don't need to worry about the uh, irregularity of uh, like a hormonal mood swing or something, for example. Mm. You know, everything's designed to be measurable and predictable in that way. If you can control your own biological system, if you can tr control your own reproductive system, uh, you're controlling also your emotional system. Well, this is this is so and, it's and this is the, 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 signal. the COVID. So the COVID claim is, you know, take enough of these shots and you've controlled your physio physiology. It's like yes. modern medicine being that, you know, we're going to externally control. And and then we were talking about, you know, the, the, the addictions and, and so forth that um, yes. so much of modern medicine is also psych, psych, psychotropic which is here mm -hmm. have you know another pill that makes your physiology affect your emotional state which then makes you controllable i mean it's it's so the the common thing is buzz cell bear don't worry i just need to fidget and i i realized i could play with my rosary beads it's not you <laughs> um and buzz cell bear is having he's meditating on uh, technically 13 abortions a year if the woman is on on the pill um, I think you don't ovulate. I think that's the point, but it 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 may it treat it's supposed to trick your body into thinking you're pregnant, so you stop ovulating. Um, and he's also thinking about mm. the uh, the effect why people were actually dying in World War II from malnourishment and the supply lines being bombed, which is getting us to the place where we're going. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. I mean, the, the the problem with the huge gasoline we're in is like we've been lied to and lied to and lied to at so many levels. And um, the the lying about the our 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 medical condition is one of the major ones. Mm. And I suppose the meta question that well, we're we're working with it, here it, is it like why why were we why have we been so incapable of figuring out what was actually true? at so many different levels for so long. We've all been trauma processed. How's that? <laughs> Just the gaslighting. So awesome. We've all been trauma yes. processed. And Kilt and I are trying to help you all think this through so that we get to the really scary parts. And you have, the, although mm. if we clip this out, this is going to come out in the middle and nobody's going to understand where we got to and why it's so important to unpack this all so that people can hear it and not simply scream you're a white supremacist and a Nazi and an anti-Semite. Oh, my goodness. Well, you know, <laughs> you can't be if you are one. <laughs> Which? What? Okay, we have all been tra thesis. We have all been trauma processed. I mean, the French Revolution was a massive trauma processing of European society. Even even those who were not in France, right, are affected by the wars and the yeah. and the terror of what the terror was. We're trauma processed by. I mean, the, the, I think Gay is talking about the, the 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 effect of slavery, right? That, but but and then and then your trauma processed by the reiteration of the trauma processing, so that you're never able to forget the trauma that you've been trauma processed with. Mm -hmm. The gaslighting on the individual level is a way of trauma. It's like it, it's I I haven't seen gaslighting as a movie, but the um, whatever happened to Baby Jane is a uh, it's another example of this. Oh, yeah, I've seen that movie. Right? I watched it when I was a. Uh, yeah, I wish it when I was a kid. So the one oh, sister, the one yeah. sister is constantly tormenting the other sister, and and mm. trying to make her go crazy or feel crazy, and it's because the the Betty Davis sister is the one who in fact crippled her. Sorry, spoiler, crippled her sister, and it's like the 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 the, the torturer is the one who in fact put her in this. The, the other sister in 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 the situation of being crip, crip I mean, she, 
drove her car into her and broke her legs so she can't walk anymore and the 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 you know the the constant trauma processing is of you know care and abuse and care and abuse and care and abuse mm -hmm. and you know that i mean this i i think the, the the what i've been thinking about the the sad thing is is it's like this is what it means to be fallen right the devil came to a Eve, Satan came to Eve and said, you know, God lied to you. Here, take this. <laughs> so the original trauma processing is the, the sa Satan's first, first lie that God lied. Um, yeah. What lies are we living in now is the huge problem that we're dealing with as a culture. But I saw Barry, I don't have trauma. I cause trauma because I do not follow the nerve. You have trauma too. Everybody does. We live in a fallen world. <laughs> I, I, have we put in enough of the, of the stepping stone so we don't step off this one and drown? Yeah, you're grinning at me now. I don't know. You know, stop it. Stop <laughs> it. Stop it. No. <laughs> Who's been traumatized the most? What a wonderful question. <laughs> Who has suffered the greatest oh, trauma great in our question. story? In all human history. Hmm, that's an interesting way of phrasing it, yeah. I have I have my uh my guests. Our Lord. He carried it for us. He took all of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, instead of like a Osho Rajneeshi mm. sitting in a, you know, sitting in a compound with a sea of adoring sycophants that are dumping this unrequited love onto him. Uh, it was reversed in the crucifixion. Jesus Christ takes all of the trauma <laughs> of all of his people, of the nation of Israel, uh, the people of Israel, and all mankind, and it's dumped on him at the crucifixion. So this is, I, 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 I do keep trying to short circuit it, and then we go back into the gas lit variant of what we're trying to accomplish here yeah. that we've said this before that the crucifixion anchors time and this i hope yes. is a demonstration of why it's so important to anchor time that it, christ becomes incarnate at a particular moment in time and that creates the ability to have cause and to understand cause and effect in our experience that there is this yes. happens and that happens and all i i'm thinking I mean, the Greeks do have some sense of chronology and time and Thucydides writes stories and, you know, Herodotus, well, Herodotus basically collects ethnographies, which is a little less anchored in time because stories about when the culture is are kind of all time mm -hmm. sort of experience. But yes. that, that with Christ, we have a, a real before and after, I mean, BCAD, but we have a, a cause and effect that can anchor us against our own sin and anchor us against our own mm. loss in this what you've described many times before but it hopefully now is feeling more visceral for people this dream time that means nothing follows from anything else and and everything is is all in the phantasmagoria of the eternal present and we're just lost and crazy and also um I mean, incapable of, of creativity and growth and change because nothing causes anything. I mean, to, to get, to get skills, to get art, to get beauty, to get, to, to, to get, um, civilization, you need to be able to go from rocks to shards or cathedral, right? <laughs> Piling rocks on, on yeah. top of each other to make a, a, a little cairn to actually making, um, the, you know, the, the temple of our Lord. So, 
the, the sense of time and the sense of entering into time is is it's not just philosophically critical it's it's psychologically critical and without that without yeah. that anchoring of time we do go crazy we do seem to go crazy mm. which is one point And bearing our sins, I mean, being able to recognize, I confess my sins, I caused this, I did this. It's the responsibility. I mean, when Tim Poole, who Buzz Sawbear said, is, um, I saw this somewhere. Not to be worried about, the, the, the short version. Um, when he's saying we need to think about individuals, yes, we need to think about our, our, our own self, you know, our own responsibility, that we carry our own cross, we carry our own responsibility for the sins that we heaped on Christ. So, but that also you can see the cause and effect in it. That's like my action here yeah. created this wound on our Lord. My action, my failure, my, you know, um, imposing my, you know, projecting my discomfort onto somebody else to make them feel bad wounds Christ, all of that. So we have to have the time and the anchor and the story yeah. and we have to have, our recognition of self-responsibility to the sins that Christ is bearing for us. Mm. What happens if we don't recognize all of that? <clears throat> We're raving. Mm. I'm raving mad. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do. We we tend to do what you know. We're one uh, sometimes. I was seeing myself on Twitter accused recently, like a few hours ago. Um, you know, you're projecting your 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 sins onto other people, which is what we'd say with the gaslighting is what the narcissists are doing. They can't bear mm -hmm. their own misery and emptiness and lack of self, and so they create situations where the people that they are they're surrounded by and it often is a one-on-one -on -one thing so a particular supply will give it to them that they'll project it onto that mm. other person and make that other person feel all of the, the the crappiness that they have of themselves because they can't make it go away so they just they feel better if they can destroy other people by way of this kind of manipulation We're not painting a too beautiful picture of <laughs> who's been projecting who on what on who right now, are we? No, no. Well, uh, <laughs> images of uh, teddy bears, Balenciaga te mm. teddy bears just uh, pop <laughs> my head but this is the thing it's like a, well it's a, it's a trauma exchange uh experience yep. it's a trauma culture trauma exchange experience so everybody's uh encouraged to stay in the mode where they're not um They're not placing the experience that they've had in the in the chronology of everybody else's experience and then isolating it, but also being reconnected to the people around them while they're doing it. Because the people that are gaslighting And anyone who's been gaslit will understand this false connection. What seems like a genuine connection in the beginning is suddenly revealed to be completely artificial or fake and completely false. Mm -hmm. Because the person who's doing the gaslighting cannot have a genuine connection with other people. They fear it. They're well, they fear being exposed for that. in the way that they fear yeah. they are, in fact, nothing. Yeah, to be vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah, to be truly vulnerable. Um, 
and the the interesting thing with the uh, I, I'm thinking in the Gospels, you know, the way Christ was with his disciples and the way he spoke to everybody. Uh, the master psychologist mm. who could see that the, you know, the people were not, um, they were not vulnerable to God. They had been disconnected from him. And in place of that were procedures and um, legalistic expectations, but not true uh, vulnerable connection with him. And so he walks into situations where he's with the people and allowing themselves to uh, be sometimes highly uncomfortable and also humiliating themselves in front of him. Thinking of the example of Mary Magdalene, you know, the, the people at the, at the dinner when she arrived, um, there's this great, oh, this wonderful uh, talk that uh, Fulton Sheen mm. did. If anyone can look it up later, please go and find this where he's talking about Magdalene, Mary Magdalene. And so, the, you know, the, this dinner where it, it, everything is very um, socially elite, they've got the guru with them, they've got the, you know, they've got the, the new rabbi and he's telling everybody, uh, you know, the, the current thing. Because that's what Judea was. It was just, it was like a production line of different kinds of uh, new things. Guru, 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 rabbi, rabbi, rabbi. And then it's like, okay, who's this new guy from Nazareth? All right, cool. He's a hot thing. Everyone wants to be having dinner with mm. this guy. And so he finds himself in these environments where there are people doing very similar things to what we're doing now. Um where they're there for different reasons and he understands this he understands the 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 culture that he's in where he's dealing with people that have trauma that have a, a genuine invulnerability to god mm -hmm. in that they've been calloused something about this world has calloused them they haven't they haven't they're they're not connected to him and he's there amongst them all. And then this crazy woman, walk, you know, she runs in and starts crying and weeping at his feet and smashes this incredibly expensive bottle of oil over his feet and, you know, uh, puts it on him for his burial. And people are scandalized by it because she is behaving scandalously, shame shamelessly in front of uh this this rabbi, this superstar rabbi, when it's supposed to be a very classy dinner where everybody's polite and they're keeping the tranquility of the social norm. Mm. And she doesn't want to do that. She wants to work out her trauma with Christ right there at the dinner. And she doesn't care. And so, like, the perfume starts to waft out through the room and everyone can smell it well the smell right that's memory if you if you have a if you have a particular time in your life there'll be a good smell mm. associated with it and it, if you have it a, 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 a like a little um scent of of this particular perfume it'll take you back you can time travel instantly <laughs> It's the same thing with the bad one. Ye, Ye also talked about this, mm. like China. And it's happened to me so many times. If I'm, wherever I am in the world, if I smell eucalypt, instantly I'm back home. Instantly. It's just, <sighs> all right, we're in Australia now. If anyone hasn't been here, you'll understand what I'm talking about. When you get here, it's, it's saturated. The air is only eucalypt everywhere. Different kinds. And if you're attuned to it, you know the different kind of types. But it's, that's all you're smelling. So Magdalene smashes this oil. 
And she's creating this super powerful memory for everyone in the mm. room while she's working out her trauma on Christ at his feet in a completely socially inappropriate way with a super by being shameless and saying things maybe that uh, they didn't want to hear at the time. Mm. Christ, Christ let her do it. I mean, she's touching the feet of, of the Messiah and crying on him. You know, very intimate. That's very personal. And he just let her do it. He didn't stop her. He didn't uh, tell her that it was not the right time, not the right place, not the right audience, not the right people. He didn't care about the tranquility. He just wanted her to weep at his feet because that was what was going to heal her at the time. And everyone else got to see it. And our culture doesn't want that. They don't want Magdalene smashing her uh, her perfume in, in front of the culture at the feet of Christ. I think this is where the fear has come in now. Like, because it's anti-gaslight. Well, I have one. I have one more piece that I want to put in, that I think is exactly. the the great gaslighting that we're all facing, mm -hmm. and this why it's so hard for us to be truthful. Um, so the Enlightenment's one great one great one, and in insofar as you know, we we're trying to live according to the Constitution, or we're trying to live according to the values of equality and. Mm -hmm. and enlightenment rationality and stuff we're doomed <laughs> because those are psyops of a certain kind i mean the enlightenment destroying the the sense of the of catholic europe which is therefore of liturgical europe which is yes. therefore of integrated yes you know spiritually christic real you know christic europe um, but the other, and recognizing yep. that what gaslight, the gaslighting is a defense on the part of the gaslighter of acknowledging their own darkness. And, you know, the, the sort of, you must believe, yeah. you must be you know, subjected to this, this, whatever feels, you know, feel pity on uh, the, the, the powers that be because they're miserable. They cannot control what they think they oh, can yeah. control. They are, I mean, we, we make, I, I think, you know, bitter jokes on in, in our online world about how they're going to end up in hell. Well, they kind of already are. <laughs> I mean, they, they, it's, it's yeah. like what, the, what, what's yeah, happened to Ye in the past two months? He's been thrown out of hell. He's been, <laughs> he was, he yeah. was, you know, making clothes, designing clothes with a company that, uses bondage teddy bears in its in its advertising which they're desperately trying to pretend they didn't but they did um you know he's been i mean at best at, like... at best he's been, he's been thrown out of the the industry that relies on these brandings and this control and he's recognized the degree to which his i mean i'm not sure he's gotten quite to the point of uh, you know, the, the, he he did acknowledge that you know once you become a celebrity, you're you're frozen at whatever age you were when they picked you up. Mm -hmm. So you know, he was 24 when he got handlers, and the handlers are going to keep control of you. So he's he's been thrown out of hell. So the gas lighters themselves are not, as it were, um, blessed in in their experience. They are miserable, and um, yet they have to keep doing it. Because otherwise they have, they have to look at them, look at themselves. Yeah. Now the United States, well, that, the United States is getting to look at itself a little bit. And it's not from the 1619 project. We kind of knew about slavery. <laughs> um, it's not from the things that we tend to recognize as our failings as a country. But I say the great gaslighting is that we were the good guys. 
And that's in World War II. And that's why it's the untouchable story that we cannot, we can never be allowed to look at. Um, and mm. I, it, so you know, we, we, we talk about E. Michael Jones here. We should also read Michael Hoffman. She reads a book on Hitler, who was, you know, the worst thing that ever happened to the Germans. Um, but you should also pay attention yeah. to what he said about Churchill and Churchill's interest in creating those wars that we have those monuments for. Um, there's banking, uh, you know, caught up in it and, and so forth. But the wouldn't it be horrible to find out that the person that you thought was your father and who was supposed to be taking care of you was supposed to be your hero had cheated on your mother and you have to rewrite your entire life history. I think I say like not only did I start journaling because of that, but I also became a historian and I got used to finding out that the ones that I thought were the good guys weren't. My father was a very good guy among other things, an alcoholic. So I get, I'm not sure that he gaslit me, but he certainly lied to me about whether or not he was drinking. Um, that having to revise over and over and over again, because you keep flip, it keeps flipping, right? The sense of which side were we on my, and I, I feel like I've talked about this, but maybe we'll see we reiterate it now. The first, the first great mm -hmm. sort of historical quarrel I had with my dad was over the dropping of the atomic bombs. He walked out of the restaurant when I was trying to argue with him on this one, because I read this revisionist history back in the 90s about whether or not the United States really needed to have been the only atomic power to actually drop them on cities. And of course, he yeah. he found it very, very difficult from, to hear the idea that maybe it wasn't necessary. And I think some of us in our audience may be already willing to, to look at this and say, uh, mm, maybe we didn't need to do that. Maybe Japan was actually already defeated. Maybe we were the bad guys in dropping those weapons. I mean, okay, so it could be mm -hmm. firebombing, but whatever, those cities were destroyed. One of them, um, Nagasaki was Catholic, had great Catholic communities in um, one of its churches is, is one of the ones incinerated, I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that makes us have to look at the rest of it. Yeah. We've had quite a few calls for Nuremberg 2.0 and dealing with the COVID yes. restrictions. Yes. That's very common here amongst people that are not happy with what happened in Australia. We were the good yeah. guys, weren't we? I read a lot of Chesterton for a long time and the Father Brown stories are very mm -hmm. interesting because they're all about actually the rationality of, of Christ. Um, and, mm. and the story that keeps that well, we call him the rational man yeah. in the Coptic liturgy. Yeah. The rational man from heaven. I keep thinking there's one of the, one of the Father Brown stories where he's, he's trying to find, there's a monument that's set up to this mm. war hero and he's going around with, He's going around at the beginning of the story saying, looking at all the monuments, making sure there's nothing said on them. And he's like, well, well, what was the story behind this? And it was the the hero of these monuments created a massacre in order to hide the fact that he was the one who killed the, I think he has mm. to kill a man who's accusing him of, and this commander, in order to disguise that one murder that he did, sends this entire troop into a death trap and mm. what father brown in the stories is looking for is any evidence that he's not just i mean he's still left as a hero but there's no uh you know calumny against the people who were killed and he's sort of mm. satisfied at that point but the problem is this commander created a pile of corpses to hide his own murder yes yes i always get myself to this point <laughs> yeah well i didn't do it to you this week <laughs> Well, 
Well, this is this is the uh, this is the trick, and this is this is the trap. Without the Messiah to take on all of our stuff, all of our uh, all of our sins, <coughs> without the Messiah allowing us to come and fall at His feet, oh yeah, and and lose it. What do we do? We have no option but to perpetuate <coughs> all of this constantly, right? Because we're we're we're, it's like <clears throat> it's a it's like being stuck in a um in a closed system, subject to entropy that runs on the currency of uh. Hiding what you did by manipulating other people to get you what you need in order to cope with what you did. Yes. It's junky behavior. Well, the United States has been on a great fender since 1945. And I, the yeah. thing is, I... Raging. I, <laughs> raging bender. I recognize that. No, with the, the I, I felt it myself in, in my life, right? When we bombed Libya... Mm -hmm. when Obama and Clinton dropped those bombs on Gaddafi. Mm. I mean, or, I mean, even I, I could feel it when after 9-11 and we end up in the in the Iraq war, eventually I you know, flipped over and said, wait a minute, no, wait, this lies. But this feeling, yeah. this you know, there's a junky feeling to be wanting to be us, the good guys. Team America. I jumped on it. I was protesting that. Well, well I jumped on a truck. And I, you got I, you got there I faster a, than I did. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know I'm. Well, we've been gaslit into your wars. You have. Sorry to cut you off. You have. But look, Australia, at its core, has done nothing but serve the American Empire constantly since World War Two. Mm -hmm. We were involved in World War One for the the Queenie, but. We operate as colonial machinery to serve the empire, and our people are the units of service to a war machine because we are the best soldiers the world has ever seen. Historically, the best. I can say it, I'll brag to everybody, but we are. We're the best. People That's your Scots Irish us. element. We're the best. Yeah, I know. That now pops out. No, no, no. We're the best. <laughs> Our huntsmen are dragging mice up fridges, all right? Huntsman spiders are dragging mice up fridges. Aussies had to be tough. And we were, we were, uh, the point is, we were pimped. Yeah. We were pimped all over the world. And in every single conflict we've come into, I've, I've said it before, we went all the way with LBJ. We followed America into every single conflict that it's ever had. So when I was as young as I was, I was like, no, nah, no, nah, no more. Well, I don't want to give any more men to this shit. We're done. My family lost two generations of men in those conflicts. Yep. Like we sacrificed two generations of men for the American empire. We got nothing for it. Part of the reason why I'm so pissed off about what happened with COVID, excuse my French, but this is how you guys are treating your allies. Mm. But but imagine how you treat your enemies. Oh, like but this is we, the, this is this is our the problem is it's our great. I mean, so my, the other thing about my father was he's a veteran <laughs> as a surgeon. Yeah. So you know yeah. he he actually served. That's why you know he's not storming out when we're talking about the, the the bombs. But he served in Thailand as a surgeon in one of our air force hospitals during mm -hmm. the vietnam war yeah so he was there during that yeah and i think i mean this is i i i, I to say this bluntly after a long exploration of what this is actually going i think the united states and our culture right now is incapable of you know looking at one, we can't look at Christ because we're so guilty. We don't even want to acknowledge what's going on in in our own souls. And that, I mean, I, yeah. I do recognize that the worst thing that's happened in modernity is that we've failed Christ. We failed to recognize our sinfulness mm -hmm. and and our own 
participation in the crucifixion because we got all proud of ourselves as rational um which we've seen you know has yeah. the, the 20th century effects that it does and the the continuing pharmacal pharmaceutical effects that it does so we're going to medicate ourselves out of whatever we feel or think we're medicating ourselves out of ever recognizing our own pain right? pain pain meds and psych psych meds are taking you away from acknowledging your own sinfulness um but i mean and i say this is the protestantism i'm not sure i i think you know we 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 we, we spend a lot of money paying um our guilt off which is i'd say thinking out loud right now why we are unwilling to say certain things to in certain kinds of conversations where we simply say christ is lord because we don't actually as mm -hmm. a culture want to admit it no no this is why i can seem very rude i've been very rude to people recently i know i'm rude to them but i'm purposefully rude to them because i don't want to have to rationalize this anymore mm. I miss dearly being in Africa more than anyone could ever imagine. I miss being, dear God, to breathe the oxygen of a continent where the, <laughs> uh, where God is everywhere mm. in everything, and you don't have to apologize for it. This is going to make me cry. <laughs> this place is like hurtling towards hell without that air mm. rationality has made this place mad madness absolute madness and because of shame yep it's just shame and then it, this this shame keeps everyone in prison keeps everyone in the fake tranquility mode instead of being able to be mad and Mary Magdalene and fall at the feet of your Messiah and say, look what I did with my life. Oh my God. And just weep about it. Well, then do it regardless of who's watching and do it regardless of how much money they have or their status or whatever they think, you know, they're doing at the time sitting with a superstar rabbi who means nothing to them because there'll be another one next week mm -hmm. or whatever. Well, but they want the superstar rabbi we simply have... to take away their pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which he does, but not. Uh... But take, but take it away in the sense of, make them feel happy, make them give, you know, get another drug, make them it's like the, the 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 constant. We've talked about this a lot, but the you know this, the big pharma is all of it in our yes. numbing ourselves. I th I mean I think the United States has so much difficulty right now acknowledging I mean, we can't so whatever yay is doing with saying you know i'm under these particular media companies with their jewish managers and their jewish owners mm -hmm. yes none of that has any hold on you if you don't take the drugs no and and this is it's like the it, it's it is wrong to blame the jews because you took those drugs yourself of the brands and the entertainment and the pharmaceuticals and the loans and the sugar and all of that. And we're scapegoating. I mean, this, this is, this is in the sense that the Holocaust is correct. I mean, you're scapegoating a people for your own sins. Hmm. Yeah. And then and I've I mean, seen like the how, scramble, how the are, scramble are, are, this yeah. this past week of everybody saying, no, oh, I don't believe, I don't go with him. I don't go with him. I don't go with this. They're all trying to pretend that they have not, no sin, right? And it's not, it's hmm. not the specific sin of saying, you know, Christ. It's, it's the, which is it's this quote sin that I think Ye and Nick are actually professing, <laughs> which is, faith in god um 
but the you know the yeah. scramble among the the political and the cultural and the social media and the online chats and the this and the that is all desperate to prove that they're not the bad ones. We are the yeah. baddies, yeah. Hans. <laughs> we dropped those bombs. Yeah. We took we took that power. We used it to drug ourselves into comfort and consumption and teddy bears with bondage gear. Because you want that mm -hmm. teddy bear with bondage gear because it's got a fancy label on it and it's a designer. Going back to our previous episode, we yeah. were talking about what colors we wear because of the fashion industry. But the yeah. sin that is like, it's, it's a sort of interesting... It's like, is it Satan or Adam and Eve are at fault? I mean, we ta we accepted it. Well, we accepted it. We accepted the apple and then uh, eventually crucified the gardener that planted Eden for us. Yep. That's what we did. He planted paradise with his own hands for us, and then we betrayed him, and then we crucified him later on. So, like, without that as a foundational mythology, what do you do with all of the trauma? What do you do to escape a tra trauma economy? Like, going back to the 4chan thing that I posted on my channel. Right. If you your foundational mythology is just hunting baddies and being the goodies and only ever avoiding becoming a baddie and never acknowledging the whole oh, hold in a second <laughs> i got some things to work out here um you're stuck you're frozen in time you can't grow you're infantilized you're retarded mm. like civilizationally retarded and you'll never break the oil you'll never have that moment where you're just working it out <laughs> And then everyone, you know, they hate they hate on Jews, which I don't, because I know what it means. I know what it means to not have that uh, uh, invitation to the dinner to, to meet the right rabbi, mm. and then have people, uh, you know, or 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 I'm talking to other people that I love, trying to explain to them, this is Raboni, like, pay attention, because how else are they how else are they going to do it? You know, but our culture doesn't want it. They don't want it. They don't want the catharsis because it's a horror. They got to go through it, and um, uh, it seems like everything that's going on now with the argument over hate speech and whatever is just—it's all a big avoidance of catharsis. So we have the we have the celebrities working it out for us. We have all of the you know the the cauldron of um, spiritual catharsis that's working it out for us out there. They're doing it in in the in the abstract, and I get to like smash my keyboard and have comments on what that person's doing. Blah 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 blah. Never myself going through that same process and working it out with mm. God, because like it outsource. Suddenly it's a Kanye problem. Suddenly it's a I don't know, whoever else problem. We get to scapegoat, constantly scapegoating. Quick, throw it on that person. Same way Germany did. Quick, it's their fault. It's their fault. It's not us. It's not us. It's not us. So there's a famous Marian miracle that fits this perfectly. <laughs> okay. Tell it's me. the story of Theophilus, which is if you've been in mm -hmm. my telegram ever and you've seen the little sticker that I have where Hail Mary full of grace punched the devil in the face. She is grabbing from the devil, topically, the contract, which is exactly what Ye said he wanted to look at, right? The contracts. We want to look at these contracts. Okay. Well, it, it's interesting that the contract with the devil is like this foundational story of medieval Christianity because Theophilus mm -hmm. had been steward in Adana of the church and the, 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 the bishop dies and he is initially offered the bishopric and he says, no, 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 I want to be steward. I'm, I'm happy being steward. And the new bishop replaces him with somebody else, at which point Theophilus is sad because he liked having that status and that 
office. And so he goes to a certain Jewish magician or sorcerer who he says, can you help me get my position back? And, and the sorcerer says, yes, I'll, I, I can take you to meet my master. And so they go <laughs> to the circus and it's at night and there's this like, um, anti-liturgical scene with the devil and his court and they have candles and, and so forth. And Theophilus mm -hmm. you know, sort of sponsored by the, the magician, the Jewish magician renounces his faith in Christ and his mother, God and his mother and signs a contract with the devil. How topical is this? Right? <laughs> now what's interesting in the medieval, in the medieval tradition, there's more or less attention paid to the fact of the go between the, the, the Jewish um, character um, in the, in the, the longest and most detailed version of it, which is from the eighth or ninth century. So it's in fact, an Eastern story that's translated from Greek into Latin and then becomes sort of central to the, the Western tradition. Okay. Um, the, 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 the Jewish sorcerer is punished for his sins, but he's not the main character because what Theophilus realizes and in the, mm -hmm. the, the, the version of the story that I know from my own research, which is Richard of Saint Laurent's citing of it over and over and over again, he calls Theophilus the penitent because what Theophilus recognizes it's his fault. <laughs> he was the one who renounced God and his mother. He was the one who has to do penance. He is the one who, you know, spends 40 days in, it said Mary's temple, right? In the church, lamenting the bargain that he made with Satan to have his prestige. And mm -hmm. um, after he spent 40 days praying and weeping and confessing his, his, his sin, Mary comes and he says, you know, can you help me? And she says, I'll, you know, your prayers have been heard. I'll, you know, you, you are penitent. And he says, no, 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 I need the contract back. And she's like, oh, well, whatever. So she, that's what, that's where that picture, the, that sort of episode when she's punching the devil to get the contract back comes from that she goes because Theophilus has begged her to get the proof that he's been forgiven. Um, in fact, in the stories I've talked about it in my book, the, the real miracle is his repentance. The real miracle is that mm. he returns to God. He's Theophilus, the penitent and getting the contract back is, is simply a sort of, it's a, it's a, it's a, a gesture. It's a gesture, but it's you know it's sort of a token rather than the actual mm. um, transformation. Um, he goes then um, with the contract to the bishop and says, "I did this." They burn the contract, and then Theophilus re reassured of his um, you know the mercy of God and and the the judgment dies a few days later, but but now penitent. So. I, you know, I've argued with some of my colleagues about this, whether or not you put, you know, it's like, it's not the Jew in the story who's to blame. It's Theophilus. because mm -hmm. He's the one that signed that contract in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as Ari, as Ari Shafia said, you know, so like we call our agents, you know, call your Jew. <laughs> said, That's what it is. Like call your agent. Well, it's interesting. Cause it's like the old, the old, the old, Theophilus had an agent. He had an agent who took him to the devil. He had a bad agent. He had a bad agent. Yeah. But in the story, in the proper medieval yeah. story, Theophilus is the, the main character and it's his sin that's the center. Mm. And in, in many of the later right. medieval retellings, the, 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 the agent isn't even there. It, it's just Theophilus sells okay. the soul to the devil. This turns into the Faust story. You know, because Faust in yes. the, the Elizabethan dramas, like Christopher Marlowe's, he wants to have all this power and knowledge and ability to do illusions in the court. And he just straight mm -hmm. up sells himself to the devil. There's no Jewish intermediary in that. So recognizing if you sign those contracts, it's your sin. Your agent has his own relationship with God. It's not your concern immediately, right? It's we've signed these contracts. Yeah. We've take we've watched. I mean, I didn't, but you know, you've been watching the porn. You've been taking the drugs. You've been take taking the loans. It's not the agent's fault. It's yours. And mm -hmm. I, you know, I think I think I saw Ye come to that at some point in the Drink Champs interview when he says, "I'm jealous. I'm envious of their ability to write these contracts." But I think, you know, the, the sort of deeper layer problem is our entire 
economic and social system is built around these contracts. So it's become very much a feature from the 18th century. <laughs> um, so the, it's, it's a real enlightenment thing. Yeah. And the Constitution mm. is a big contract. The Bill of Rights is definitely a contract. Well, I just had a thought. <laughs> so we're talking about gaslighting and contracts, and then, okay, if it's not in writing, it doesn't exist. We rely on the written thing for our memory because it's like, okay, right. we don't have this, uh, we don't have this piece of paper with your signature on it, so it doesn't, it doesn't exist if it's not in writing. Other cultures have their verbal agreement. A man's word mm -hmm. is as good as a contract. Now, the effect of the gaslighting on our culture is it's a we're like a it's it's like a not a recession, it's like a great depression of fidelity. Mm -hmm. The fidelity isn't like not screwing around on your spouse, but it's being a person of your word that is makes you truly like uh in fit, in fit, right? Um, yeah, your yes be yes and your no be no. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure somebody significant said that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if we want to live in a Christian society, that's what it means. It means actually living yeah. by what Christ taught us, which is don't lie. Don't take, don't make false oaths. Don't depend on tricky loopholes yeah. and contracts and bargains and, you know, the jot and the tittle of the way in which you can wiggle your way out of these agreements. So it, it mm. goes back and, you know, the, 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 we want to be, we want to live in a, in a, in a, in a relation and have relationships in which people can trust that the other one will behave according to the way that they said. And the only way to do that is if we, in fact, all follow Christ's teaching on that and let our yes be yes and our no be no. And we don't try to play yeah. games with each other by um, you know, playing terms and terms and agree terms and conditions that we mm. dodge. Well, that's the, the that's the worst um, infringement of of gaslighting somebody else, mm. because you're constantly changing the TNCs. Yep. And this and this is where it becomes so damaging when it when it spills out from being just an individual one on one experience to being a group experience. What happens when a whole group is being gaslit? Terms and conditions are changing all the time. So not only are you not able to um, develop a a true fidelity. You're not even allowed to make a predictive uh, model in terms of like thinking in contracts because the, the information is constantly changing. The parameters are constantly changing. Uh, so I'm thinking of how this like civilizational meltdown that we're experiencing right now is like linked, you know, the, uh, well, this is what we mean when we say it's sin. Right. It's, 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 mm. this is what it means. So when you, when your society is full of sin, this is what it looks like. Nobody can trust anybody. It's, it's, yeah. it's, you know, you're trying to bind each other with these magic words that you've written down on a piece of paper that you're then going to hire lawyers to figure out how not to abide by. Hmm. Mm. Well, it's a thing in, uh, it's a, it's a thing in the, in the legal, in the legal profession, but now it's a thing in our language. Our law is based on language. Mm. So we're having a war over terms and conditions in terms of our, the words we're allowed to say. Yep. Which is why policing speech is really dangerous. So I'm trying to, uh, 
Buzzsaw Bear is saying, how can you trust anyone that doesn't keep their word? I have two brothers that are both liars. This is the problem. I mean, this is, this is when we, when we want to live, I, I'd say, you know, we have to start by honoring our own words and don't lie. Don't, don't get sucked into this game because nobody wins. Mm. But I think, I'm not sure we're solving it right now, but have we, have we diagnosed it? fully now the the uh well maybe we fit some some layers of it right that sin sin goes from the individual interactions that we have to the entire world's being caught up in certain kinds of lies mm. that because history is is meant to be telling the truth if you're if you're not examining it not looking at it honestly and maybe you know n not being able to see the degree to which your side, which you've always believed had this particular role, maybe it has a different role than the one you thought it had. It's all has to be anchored in Christ. Otherwise it's not going to be testable. We've, we've, mm. we've, we've, we've talked around that. And I, I think, I mean, and this in my local theory of why world war two is the place where so much of this hinges on because there's a giant lie at the heart of that one. That we're not able to to call ourselves on mm. and being american that's kind of hard because <laughs> it's the source of our moral moral standing mm. And you've already got so many people trying to demoralize you. Well, that too. <laughs> well, it just it just means the incentive even to try and deal with it is, you know, mm. you're de-incentivized even more. Because you think, oh, okay, I'm dealing, I'm dealing with a situation where my culture can't even decide what a woman is, <laughs> you know? So you're making you're having you're having wars of a cat like word category right but but i say this is where it's yeah. like we're having wars over these work word categories because we've been lying and so everything breaks mm. down mm. yeah that makes sense got to do more history mm. more more history not less more history not less Buzz Salber, Marika. Yes, well, we're delightful. Marika. <laughs> oh, I know someone is going to be so. Oh, they're so funny. I'm so anti-American in my conversations with people on the internet, and sometimes it's just done for shits and giggles. But... <laughs> yes, well, I, 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 this is going to, this is going to backfire. We got to get that contract. Not the we got to get that contract back. Yeah, you we do. We got to get that contract back. But to do that, no, we do. It, and the thing is, our penance, our penance may or may not be the thing that we've been told that it is. Right? That's the pro the gaslighting problem. Uh, you know. Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. Well, the the the, the, the solution. <laughs> There's always a bloody solution. But the solution now is everything but returning to Christic, uh, Christic uh, mentality. Right. Christic culture. Because we're, we're so trying so hard not to see that thing that we did. Yeah. 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 I mean, Australia's got it bad. Like... Uh, you know, we had this, uh, and it isn't white privilege, people. Now. That's not the answer. No, <laughs> it's not the question. It's like that's the gaslight version of what you haven't acknowledged as a society, as opposed to the the truth, which is Mary Magdalene at the feet of Christ. Mm hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Marika. Okay. So. <laughs> I think we say now to be continued. Did we do it? 
Yeah, do definitely. We do, do, we, do we just uh, disentangle the at least the gaslighting? What do you think, audience? You're still there for now. Is there a scheduled time it's for so the stream? High. Yes, it's usually at 9 p.m. on Central Time um, on Wednesdays. But we had to start late because I had a function that I had to go to and... So we made it into our theme. No, wait. Our theme followed the fact that I had to do the no, wait. Everything's meta. We're in the stream. We're in the we're in the we're in the arc. You want to be in the arc with us because we're the only ones riding the flood. And without our yeah. arc, you're gonna be drowning with the unicorns. Just like in the Irish Rovers song. Which I can't sing because I can't sing. <laughs> A long time ago. No words. Anyway, no, do it. No, I can't remember all the words, and I can't follow <laughs> carry the tune, and I, I can't, I can't go there. <sighs> yeah, it's like you know. So, to summarize, we we all have to deal with our own junky behavior. Yes, we all have to deal with our own junky all behavior. Yeah, and and yeah. you have to recognize when you're being gaslit, but you also have to recognize your own junky behavior. Yeah. Yes. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us. We're now, we're now we're addicted to being on the stream. We can't let go. We have to go now. Bye. <laughs> see, we're just replacing addiction. Replacing our addiction. See, see you all <laughs> next time at our regularly scheduled time of 9 p.m. Central Time on the Mosaic Arc. Oh, no. I blew, I blew the transition. Bye. I might wait. No, no. This is bad. No. What I can't. Oh, there we go. All right. Here we go. Outro. Bye. <laughs>